Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Ernie Martin, author, marketing communications expert. He's also the founder and CEO of Receivable Savvy, a research and content development consultancy, helping finance professionals master order to cash and it's been founded in 2015. Welcome to the show, Arnie. AJ, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate uh, you allowing me to come in and have a good chat with you. You are welcome. You are welcome to the show. You are welcome to India, and I'm sure not only in India, but also so many places across the globe, people will benefit yep. from what we are talking about. You know, everybody wants to make their customers love their business. But you say that nobody cares about your business. That's also the title <laughs> of your book. So help us understand. Firstly, uh, how, I'm very curious about this title of the best of, of your book. And secondly, yeah. so how do I make customers actually not just care, but actually love my business? Let's start. With right. this. OK, excellent. Excellent. E excellent way to start. Um, and so I, I've been doing marketing communications for. 30 some odd years, uh, working with Fortune 500 companies, also working with small businesses, entrepreneurs, startups, uh, a, a number of uh, government agencies, including the CDC. Uh, and so I I've, I've come across uh, quite a bit of uh, interesting situations, um, characters, and opportunities. And so what I find is when I, when I um, mentor entrepreneurs and small business owners. And I talk to them and we walk through what you need to do in order to properly promote your business. Um, many people tell me, and these are entrepreneurs and small business owners, they tell me, hey, all I have to do is put my shingle out of my door that says I'm open for business and everyone will flock to me. And so I have to tell them, well, nobody cares about your business. You know, maybe, maybe your, your mother or father, maybe your spouse, Maybe your college roommate, you know, maybe your best friend uh, may care about your business, but nobody else cares about your business. And so it's it's a little shocking to them because they think they've got the best product or the best service in the world. And they may have a great product and service, but the challenge is how do you actually get people to love your business? And so there are steps and principles that you have to keep in mind in order to make customers love your business because right out of the box um, nobody does and so and I also have a principle a couple of principles that sort of tee that up a little bit but that's the impetus or the reason for titling this book nobody cares about your business because really everybody virtually everybody is indifferent about your business when you start it what you have to do as a small business owner or an, or an entrepreneur is implement those marketing communication principles, strategies, and tactics that make them love your business. And it is very possible to do that. Absolutely. So why should I come in between and, you know, not ask the question you talk about, not one, but eight universal marketing principles every entrepreneur must know to make customers love their business, if it's possible to share as many as uh, of this, if possible, all of them. Yeah, so uh, I'll start off with um, number one, not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. And so there are, there are a number of people who decide, hey, I want to I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to leave my nine to five and be my own boss. And I hear a lot of people say, I want to be my own boss. Well, being your own boss is really tough and it's not for everyone. And so when you're working a job, when you're working for someone else, you're working for a company, you may have a very good job. Um, you don't have to take out the trash. You don't have to do the accounting. You don't have to be responsible for all the sales or all the revenue that comes in. And you don't have to hold customers' hands and do, basically do everything and wear multiple hats. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to do everything. You have to do sales. You have to do uh, customer engagement. You have to do marketing. And you have to take out the trash and do the accounting, just to name a few. And so the first principle I mentioned in the book is that not everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur. But there are certain characteristics that make up good entrepreneurs. And, and several of those include the fact that you may work a nine to five. You may have a traditional job, 
but you are it, it's it's there's a passion burning inside you where you want to go and start your own thing and you dream about it day and night. And it's not simply for the fact that you don't want to work for somebody else. It's because you have something in terms of a product or service that you think is wonderful and you just can't wait to get it out there. A another principle is that um, you want to make more money than you're making in your current job. And so there are a lot of entrepreneurs that say, hey, I, I make a good salary, but I think I can make five times more because there are certain parameters in which you have to operate when you work a nine to five. When you are an entrepreneur and you're starting your own business or you launch a startup, you can do whatever you want. Now, certainly there's some things you shouldn't do, some things you should do, but you have a lot more freedom uh, to do that. And so the freedom allows you, if you have a lot of creativity, to expound on that creativity and let it flourish. Whereas, you know, working within the parameters of a job, your manager may tell you, you know, do these things, but don't do these other things, you know, again, which is fine. That's the nature of the environment. But that's that those are two principles or two characteristics of good entrepreneurship. And that is you have a passion for product and service that you developed and your creativity is just burning inside you to where you want to go out and carve your own path. And so that's followed by the fact that. It's important for entrepreneurs and small business owners to understand that unless you're selling water to people in the desert or you're selling oxygen to people underwater, nobody's going to care about your business. OK, and so I use those two examples because everybody in the desert needs water. Right. No question <laughs> about it. Everybody underwater needs oxygen. Right. And if you have neither of those things in those two environments, you will die. Or, or, or sorry to interrupt. There is a company which has come up in the U.S. and they are, you know, launching some precision water. Or I don't know. I just read it a few <laughs> days back and they almost uh, they priced it around, say, four hundred dollars per bottle. So wow. maybe. Yeah. Wow. So I was and wow. I guess they have got some funding also. So I just couldn't help myself <laughs> mention about about the water part. Oh, that, oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, that's, you know, so um, so it's that principle that, you know, even my business is, is my business a life or death business. No, it's not. And virtually every business that's launched is not a life or death business. Coca-Cola is not a life or death business. Apple Computers is not a life or death business. But what they've done, because they know that they're not selling water to people in the desert, they're not selling uh, oxygen to people underwater. They know that they have to do their due diligence and package and position their brand, their product, and their service so that people will, number one, be aware of it, and then be interested in it, and then choose to buy it. And so those are just two principles in terms of not everybody should be an entrepreneur. And then the second one being, unless you're selling something that is a, a life or death product or service, you've got to do some work in order to make people love your business. Right, right. Do you want to mention more or do you want me to be? Oh, I'll, to... I'll, I could keep going until, until the end of the podcast. Yeah, so you, you are, you are the must, you are the master. And I guess it is always good to learn from the master. So why, why is the, not have this chance and learn about it? A absolutely. I myself noted them down. Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll go through, um, so really, e each chapter focuses on a particular principle. OK, and so I mentioned the first chapter being an entrepreneur, the second chapter, sell which is titled the principle of selling water in the desert. Right. Chapter three talks about the principle of developing an effective brand. And what that entails is brand positioning, um, creating a tagline and understanding what a value proposition is and why it's important. Brand, uh, the principle of, de of developing an effective brand is more than just simply creating a logo or, or creating a name. An, an effective brand constitutes all the characteristics that are associated with your company, whether it's, you know, starting with what, what customers and what prospects see visually in terms of logos, taglines, things of that nature. But it also dovetails and inter inter is intertwined with what you do, what you deliver it, how you deliver it, excuse me, how you deliver it, how you engage with customers, how you handle customer relationships, et cetera, how you handle problems with customers. 
and how you follow up with customers when you actually sell them something, whether it's a product or service, as well as the quality of the product or service you, you provide them. And so all those things are wrapped up in your brand. And so I walk readers through how to, you know, how do you develop uh, a brand? What, what's, what's the positioning of your brand? You know, uh, how do you actually develop a value proposition? And that value proposition is what is it that you're giving customers? What problem or challenge are you solving for a customer? And so then chapter four goes into brand identity. And so that gets into developing a logo. How do you apply your logo? And again, the logo, I, I recommend that entrepreneurs and small business owners don't go and create their own logo in Microsoft Word. Okay, now, can they do that? Of course they can. But if you spend at least you know a few hundred dollars to find a professional to develop your logo, they'll take all those characteristics that are interwoven within your product or service and then they will craft a logo that is applicable for what you're trying to do as well as where you want to use it because um, a number of entrepreneurs and small business owners i see they create a logo and they don't understand application around logo now they may create a logo for their website but can their logo be printed on a brochure and so they may say, this logo looks great, not, not concerned about the background on the logo file. And then they try to print it on a brochure and they see this big square around their logo. And they say, why is that, why is that square there? Well, it's because you didn't properly create your logo with the right tools and create the right file for it. And then not only do you have to be concerned about where you place your logo in terms of the website and brochure, but if you, if you choose to put your logo on uh, merchandise such as mugs, hats, t-shirts, and other things. And there are different color combinations you have to keep in mind because the color that you might use for your website, if you want that exact same look on a brochure or on a hat or a t-shirt, it's likely going to be a slightly different color. Now, even though the color numbers are, the, are different, you know, whether it's Pantone or HEX, it's different, but the results will be the same. And so that's why you have to keep that in mind when you're applying your logo to different uh, places and, and having different applications for your logo. Uh, the next chapter, chapter five, the principle of creating an awesome website. And so companies like Squarespace and Wix, they've made it relatively easy for anyone to create a website, but it's not for everyone. And so there are some who may want to create a website, even an e-commerce site, and sell merchandise. And Wix and Squarespace is fine because it's fairly turnkey. You can go on there, and in a day, you can create a website that's an e-commerce site. Now, the per-month charge is likely going to be slightly higher because they do everything for you, and they you must work within certain parameters. So your, your website is going to have certain design criteria that you have to fit into when you use Squarespace and Wix. But the alternative is basically building a, web, a website from scratch, if you will. And so there are other tools that you can use, such as uh, WordPress. I'm a big fan of WordPress. WordPress has templates and you can manipulate templates, but you have to do a lot more work with certain webs, uh, WordPress templates, even if, especially if you have a, uh, an e-commerce site. And so I also walk through uh, whether or not you want to do it yourself you know, through Wix or Squarespace, um, even Shopify. Shopify has a great website for e-commerce uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, but if you want something tailored specifically for what you're doing, I always recommend WordPress because it's got a, almost an endless number of plugins that provides a lot of capability. It, it takes some time and you may need to hire a developer, but you can develop a, a WordPress website uh, a basic WordPress website for as little as two or three hundred dollars. Now you can also spend ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending on what you're trying to do. But I walk the reader through certain things you have to keep in mind as you're developing a website. And so that's that's chapter five. Chapter six, the principle of promoting your business, is the longest chapter in the entire book because that gets into marketing, advertising, social media content development around blogs, articles, podcasts, videos, public relations, email marketing, et cetera. 
And so I walk the reader through each one of those um, areas. And so what, what I find when I talk to entrepreneurs and small business owners, they may know a little bit about you know, creating a blog or a little bit about advertising or social media, but they don't have a comprehensive understanding of the entire um, promotion that goes into or the entire effort that goes into promoting your business and using all of those uh, platforms and, and, and tactics. And so I walk the reader through whether or not you want to do all those things yourself. If you do, here are the things you need to do. If you want to hire a marketing expert or an agency, here are things to keep in mind. If you want to hire someone, what to look for, uh, what, to, what, to, what to keep in mind when you're working with someone. And at the very least, if someone is hiring a marketing expert, at least by reading this book, they can speak the language and talk the talk around marketing so that when their expert or their agency is sharing information with them, they have an understanding of it and they're not just coming in cold. So I, I find that that's very helpful for a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners because they, uh, I've, the ones I've spoken to, they often say, my marketing expert or the agency has recommended this. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Uh, and it's simply because they've never heard of it before or they don't understand how some of these things work. And so by reading this book, they can get, it's sort of a cheat sheet, if you will. And so it allows them to say, oh, I understand what this means. I understand what, you know, the, the, the reasons for blogging, the reasons for creating videos and podcasts. I understand different customer uh, segments like to absorb information different ways. Some like to read, some like to watch, some like to listen. And so it's important to know where your audience sits in terms of the different offerings in order to promote your business. And then as I wrap up the book, I close with two chapters. Uh, this, chapter seven is the principle of fishing for prospects. So you can have the, the, the most wonderful product service and some great marketing. But at the end of the day, you have to know who your prospects are and how to uh, retrieve them. And so there are different ways to do that. And I walk through how you can do that if you're an offline business, how you can do that if you're an online business as well. And then I close with chapter eight, the principle of selling. And it's, it's really a synergy between marketing and sales, sales and marketing. And I talk about um, sales strategies and tactics, things that you can do offline or online, and then actually closing the sale and asking for the sale. And so the principle of asking for the sale works both for online businesses because you always have to have a call to action. If you're requiring your prospects to read an email or read your newsletter or to see something online on your website or read your blog or what have you, you really should have a call to action. It should be overt or covert. And so, you know, blogs, oftentimes you can have a blog that's well written. You don't necessarily have to have a strong call to action, but they know who wrote it. They know it's you from your company, et cetera. And so that helps to cultivate uh, and fertilize their mind to prefer your company. Uh, other times when you have email marketing, et cetera, it's important to ask for the sale. And you can ask for the sale by saying, you know, start now or sign up for this uh, um, sign up for this webinar or download this ebook or do this thing now. And so that's asking for the sale. And so I encourage entrepreneurs and small business owners, don't be shy in doing that. S a similar principle applies offline, too. If you're a salesperson and you're meeting with someone at the end of the day and at the end of your conversation, th there's this notion of always be closing. You know, that's that's the old probably madman uh, designation <laughs> about how you should try to get sales. But really, you should a keep in mind how you can solve the problem. For your customer or your prospect and then b don't be shy in saying hey let's start now or let's let's schedule uh, an appointment where we can have you go through the process and initiate the start of our engagement it boils down to don't be shy to ask for the sale and not that you should ask for it as soon as you walk in the door but it's important to listen to what your prospects are saying what their pain points are and then when you have an understanding as to how you can solve it, then start to close. Tell them that, hey, you can solve their problem and this is how you can do it. Let's get started now. 
And so that's, I gave you sort of a, uh, an overview of all of the chapters. And by reading this book, uh, anyone, small business owner, entrepreneur, even someone who's been in marketing for years can still benefit from this book because it, 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 it does what I, it does something that I say around cutting out the fluff. And so in, in a lot of areas in business, there's sometimes fluff. And even in marketing, I hate to say there's a lot of fluff and flowery language. It cuts through all the what we what we say is as BS and it gets to the heart of the matter. And that's why sometimes I refer to it as a cheat sheet, because it just gives you the answers right then and there. And it provides context, but it also gives you the answers right away. So it's not um, it's not War and Peace. It's not Moby Dick. You know, it's not a, a great love story. It just gets to the heart of the matter, specifically important to entrepreneurs and small business owners. Absolutely. The heart of the matter is that everybody wants their customers to love them and love their business. And this, uh, your book is a step by step, you know, for a lot of people. And I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from it. So what what ex ex exactly does the customer want? Do they want better discounts? Do they want their pain to be a problem to be resolved? Or, you know, what is it that finally wakes them fall in love with you? Is it about the logo? Is it about the brand? Is it about the selling yeah. part, yeah. the CTA? Yeah. What is it? What is your experience? Well, you know, my experience is that customer, we, we are customers. And so we, when you think about it, we're consumers, we buy things and we either buy things for our household, our home, for our family, or we buy it for our business, for our work, et cetera. And so every customer is generally the same in that every customer has needs. Okay. In the same respect, every customer has challenges and pain points. And so an example would be, um, let's see, let's, let's say that I have, I love coffee, okay, but I drink coffee and you know, it, because of the caffeine, it, it keeps me up at night, it makes me jittery, but I don't want to drink uh, decaffeinated coffee because a lot of decaffeinated coffee doesn't have a great taste to it. And it's like, oh, it's not really coffee. So someone comes up with a a decaffeinated coffee or a partially decaffeinated coffee brand that has great taste, aroma, and robust flavor, et cetera. And they're solving an issue for a customer that can't drink straight coffee because of the caffeine, but doesn't like decaffeinated coffee. So that's an example of a want or a need that a company can satisfy. And that's based on a consumer, that, that's based on a, a, a that's a consumer example. Um, a B2B example might be, um, let's say that, and I work with a lot of companies that sell ERP services, okay? So let's say that you're, you're a manufacturer and you've got customers and you've got employees and you've got a warehouse and you've got a manufacturing floor. And so part of your problem is how do you coordinate everything from your staff to their scheduling to what customer orders have come in to your manufacturing processes. And so an ERP solution can be sold to that company that aligns everything and keeps everything in sync. Because without it, it's hard to properly manage and schedule everything so customers get their orders on time. So if a company is struggling to provide and fulfill orders to their customers and their customers are complaining, that hits, that, that hits the bottom line. You may lose some customers because you're not providing good quality or providing the products on time. But if you have an ERP system, then you can coordinate all of those things, tightly integrate your entire operation and make sure that your, your staffing is on point, your manufacturing is extremely efficient, and then you're actually delivering products to your customers on time the way they want it. And so... An ERP company may go into a prospect and say, we understand that these are your pain points. Okay. And here's how we can help resolve each of those pain points. Now, the challenge may be installing and getting everyone up to speed. And that in and of itself can be a challenge. But I've seen a lot of ERP companies do an excellent job of coming into an organization and getting everyone up to speed. And then six months to a year later, staff senior management, even customers love the fact that they've implemented this ERP system and everything is working smoothly. 
So th those are a couple of examples of how you make people love your business is because you, you, you understand their pain points by listening. And then if you're, if you're in the conversation, you hopefully have the product or service that you can leverage in order to provide to them so that they will be happy. But one thing I will say also, and I run into this in talking with some entrepreneurs and small business owners, promoting your business and making sure your prospects understand it and actually buy from you is a long-term proposition. Okay. And it's a numbers game also. So if uh, going back to the ERP company, if they need to sell 10 solutions in a month, they are not talking to just 10 prospects. They are talking to 100 or 500 prospects at any given time. And so when you look at it that way, you've got to talk to significantly more potential customers in order to solidify business with that, with that few, with those few customers. So if I'm looking to sell five or 10 per month, I need to be talking to 100 or 500 in, at any given time, because at some point you're going to convert 5% or 10% of them, which in, in a lot of cases is, is a very good conversion rate, uh, especially with larger enterprise solutions. Right, right. There is so much to learn from you, Ardi, and you know, they can learn from the book. They can mm -hmm. also learn from you directly from you, the master. And so, mm -hmm. Uh, you know what? What better? This is just one episode of this particular interview with you, and then, but there is so much to learn from you directly. So, how do people get hold of your book? And secondly, how do they uh, know more about you? How do they get also professionally engaged with you so that you know they yeah, get? So, yeah. So, AJ, the um, the book can be found on Amazon. It's currently available uh, on Amazon in Kindle version as well as paperback version. So, anyone. Anyone can buy it by simply going to Amazon and typing in nobody cares about your business or just typing in my name, Ernie Martin, and the book should come up. And in terms of uh, reaching out to me, um, anyone can reach out to me. My email address is ernie.martin at receivablesavvy.com, or you can simply come to our website, receivablesavvy.com. And what we do is uh, specifically we focus on doing research, market research, specifically for a particular area of finance called order to cash. And then what we do with that research is we share that research with our audience. And we have, we share some of it uh, at no charge. We also share some of it via interactive dashboards that customers can go and slice and dice the data themselves uh, at, 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 via a subscription model. And so that subscription model is very affordable. Anyone can go and, and get a subscription or you can just sign up and get a free registration uh, account or a free membership account on our website. But uh, that's how people can get a hold of me. And, um, you know, certainly anyone that wants to send me an email or come to our website and visit, they're more than welcome to do. And certainly encouraging everyone to buy the book. Absolutely. Absolutely. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us.